What is Ohr's theorem for Hamiltonian graphs, and how do we prove it? That's what we'll be going over in today's Wrath of Math lesson. This is a viewer-requested video. I always appreciate those viewer requests, so be sure to leave yours down in the comments. We'll begin, of course, with statement of the theorem. So let G be a graph with at least three vertices. If, for all non-adjacent vertices of G, the sum of their degrees is greater than or equal to m, the number of vertices, then g is a Hamiltonian graph. So this is a sufficient condition. If a graph meets this condition, then it is Hamiltonian. If a graph doesn't meet this condition, then we still don't know. It may or may not be Hamiltonian. I'm not going to go through any examples of applying this theorem to a graph because I think people usually like these proof videos to be as concise as possible, so we're going to go ahead and get into the proof, but if you haven't ever applied this theorem to a graph, you're not sure what it means, I'd give it a try um, as soon as you can. Do a little bit of sketching, try applying the theorem. For now, we're going to get into the proof. So for this proof, we're going to use a very powerful proof technique, proof by contradiction. One of my favorites, doing a proof by contradiction, it sort of lets us start off the proof with some free extra information. So let's go ahead and write out our contradiction assumption. And I'm going to use some abbreviations here to help us fit everything on the whiteboard. So here is our contradiction assumption. Suppose, for the sake of contradiction, there exists a graph G with vertex set V and edge set E. It's got n vertices, at least three of them, such that for all non-adjacent vertices, for each pair of non-adjacent vertices in the graph, the sum of their degrees is greater than or equal to n. So we're just saying this graph fits our condition. However, the graph is not Hamiltonian, which is, of course, the opposite of what we claim is true, that such a graph must be Hamiltonian. So, we've got this contradiction assumption. Let's see if we can prove that it forces a contradiction and thereby prove our theorem. Now, since G is not a Hamiltonian graph, it doesn't have any Hamiltonian cycles, it may be the case that we could add an edge to G and the resulting graph would also not be Hamiltonian. But if we add all possible edges to G, making it a complete graph, then it would certainly be Hamiltonian because complete graphs with at least three vertices are Hamiltonian. So let's add as many edges as possible to G so that the resulting graph would be Hamiltonian with any additional edge. Let me write that out. So we're saying add edges to G until the resulting graph that we'll call G prime would be Hamiltonian with any additional edge. So what we're doing here is using a strategy that's used a lot in graph theory proofs. We take an object that we know exists, and from that we can conclude that this more extreme version of the object exists. So this object G prime, this graph, is on the verge of being Hamiltonian. Any additional edge would make it Hamiltonian, which sort of gives us some more power to work with, because G prime can't be Hamiltonian, but it's really close to being Hamiltonian, so it's just begging for a contradiction here. You'll notice G prime has a vertex set V, that's the same as G, which should make sense, because all we did was add edges to G, so we still got the same vertices. It's got an edge set we'll call E prime. E prime may be equal to E. It may be the case that G is equal to G prime, but we don't know, so we're just going to call it E prime. And basically what we're saying with all this is that our non-Hamiltonian graph G must be a subgraph of some maximally non-Hamiltonian graph with the same vertex set. Some graph, G prime, that has the same vertex set and an edge set such that any additional edge would create a Hamiltonian cycle, thereby making the graph Hamiltonian. A very important thing we have to notice here before we move on is that G prime also fulfills this condition we laid out above. So for all vertices x, y in G prime, such that x, y is not an element of the edge set, so x and y are not adjacent, the sum of their degrees still has to be greater than or equal to n. That's true because all we did was add edges to G. So if any two vertices in G prime are still not adjacent, 
their degrees could only have increased if they changed at all. So certainly this is still true. The sum of the degrees of any non-adjacent vertices in G prime is greater than or equal to n. So if we can find something to contradict that, then we'll be golden. Then we'll have our theorem proved. And that's really the key, because as we'll see, this is what we end up contradicting. Now we're going to make an observation, same observation we made earlier. Since G prime isn't Hamiltonian, we know it's not a complete graph, because complete graphs with at least three vertices are Hamiltonian. So we know we can take two vertices, say x, y, from G prime that are not adjacent. So we'll say, take x, y from the vertex set of G prime such that they are not adjacent. Now, if we were to join these two vertices with an edge, that would create a Hamiltonian cycle. We know that's true because adding any edge to G prime must create a Hamiltonian cycle to make G the, uh, the resulting graph Hamiltonian. So again, if we join X and Y, we create a Hamiltonian cycle. That means that there already must be a Hamiltonian path from X to Y in G prime. Otherwise, adding an edge joining X and Y would not create a Hamiltonian cycle. It's already got to be a Hamiltonian path from X to Y for that to be true. So let's write that path out. So we're just calling the vertices of G prime, we're labeling them V1 through Vn, where V1 is the vertex X and Vn is the vertex Y. So this is a Hamiltonian path from X to Y in G prime, and you can see it contains every vertex of the graph G prime. It contains V1, V2, all the way up through Vn, all n vertices. Now just to uh, mention again the point we were just making, if we joined X and Y with an edge, that would create a Hamiltonian cycle. That's how we know that this path has to exist. Clearly, if no Hamiltonian path from X to Y existed, joining X and Y with an edge would not create a Hamiltonian cycle, but we know it does because adding any edge to G prime will create a Hamiltonian cycle. So now, if we want to contradict this condition that the sum of the degrees of any non-adjacent vertices in G prime has to be greater than or equal to n, we want to find a way to restrict the degree of x and or the degree of y. And now we'll make a crucial observation that's going to be the key to finding that contradiction. So here's the claim. For all vertices vi in this path for i going from 2 to n, so from v2 all the way up to vn, for all of those vertices that are adjacent to x, the preceding vertex vi minus 1 cannot be adjacent to y. So this is an argument that restricts the degree of y based on the degree of x. But why is this true? Of course, we just can't throw it out without any justification. Let me draw a diagram that I think will really help illustrate why this is true. So again, here's the claim. We're saying for any vertex in this path that x is adjacent to, y cannot be adjacent to the preceding vertex in the path. So here we've drawn out a diagram of our Hamiltonian path. Starts at x, then it goes to v2, and so on, all the way up to vn minus 1, and then finally ending at y. Now let's draw out the situation we've described. I'll use orange. So let's say x is adjacent to some vertex vi in this path. And we're saying that if this is the case, any time this is the case, in fact, y cannot be adjacent to the preceding vertex. But suppose it was. So y is adjacent to the preceding vertex, vi minus 1. Do you see the problem this creates? The problem is that if this were true for, for any vertices, vi, vi minus 1, this creates a Hamiltonian cycle. We could go from x to vi, and then all the way up to y, and then down here to vi minus 1, and then all the way back to x. That would be a cycle containing all vertices of the graph. So that would be a Hamiltonian cycle. 
However, we know our graph G prime doesn't have any Hamiltonian cycles. So that's why we know this statement has to be true. Because again, if it's not true, if X is adjacent to some vertex in this path, where Y is also adjacent to the preceding vertex, then that would create a Hamiltonian cycle, and we can't have that. Now let me just, for clarity, write out that Hamiltonian cycle that would be created if this statement were not true. <clears throat> so there it is one more time. For all vertices VI, where I ranges from 2 to N, where X is adjacent to VI, Y cannot be adjacent to VI minus 1, the vertex that precedes it in the Hamiltonian path. Otherwise, this would be a Hamiltonian cycle in G prime, going from X to VI to VI plus 1, all the way up to Y, then to VI minus 1, and all the way back to X. So what this means is that for any of these vertices from V2 to Y that X is adjacent to, there is a vertex in this range from X to VN minus 1 that Y can't be adjacent to. Now X can only be adjacent to vertices from V2 to Y because those are all the vertices in the graph besides X and X can't be adjacent to itself. So the degree of X is an additional number of vertices that Y cannot be adjacent to. Now we can start to put together our final degree argument. What do, we, what do we already know is a constraint on the degree of y in this graph? Certainly, the degree of y has to be less than or equal to n minus 1. Since we're talking about simple graphs, y can't be adjacent to itself, so the maximum possible degree of y would be it being adjacent to every other vertex in the graph, all n minus 1 other vertices but we just laid out another restriction on the degree of y, which is every, for every vertex x is adjacent to, there's a vertex that y can't be adjacent to. So we have a stricter condition here. We can subtract the degree of x because the degree of x is a number of vertices that y also is not allowed to be adjacent to. Then, very simply, add the degree of x to both sides of this inequality. And we get that the degree of x plus the degree of y is less than or equal to n minus 1. And that, my friends, that is our contradiction. That contradicts the assumption, well, not even the assumption, but the conclusion we made earlier from a previous assumption. The conclusion was that the sum of the degrees of any non-adjacent vertices in G prime is greater than or equal to n. We just showed that that was not true. And of course, this all followed from our assumption for, for the sake of contradiction. So by contradiction, we've proven that our theorem must be true. If a graph fits these conditions, then the graph is Hamiltonian. And one more time, here at the second to last step, we showed that for every vertex x is adjacent to, there is a vertex that y can't be adjacent to. And that's how we were able to get to this inequality. Then we added the degree of x to both sides, and we get our contradiction, thus proving Orr's theorem, giving us a sufficient condition for a graph to be Hamiltonian. Now, I think it's a fun theorem and a fun proof, for sure. So I hope this video helped you understand Orr's theorem and how to prove it, most importantly. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description.